and we are live hello hello friends this isn't the best lighting because it's a little dark outside because of the rain but i am b dot bailey from the prophetic remnant and i want to give everyone an opportunity to log on to see that we are live and to be notified come on in the room come on in the room i'm excited because we've been pretty much on a mini series of exposing witchcraft and this weekend we have the gathering in baltimore maryland where we have a private gathering for members and associates and we have the bible study picnic which is an outreach effort to evangelize and to spread the gospel of christ jesus now come july july we will be in dallas texas and as i was sitting talking with the father um this is the conclusions that um, we're come to based on that conversation dallas texas stop is going to be an exposing witchcraft uh stop the topics for that whole weekend are going to deal with witchcraft which strategies against witchcraft and a panel discussion exposing witchcraft on all levels from the music to um even in the dance to the food to media and so on and so forth so i want anyone who hears from the lord and know that this is where they're supposed to be start getting your stuff ready now july the 20th we will have the discussion in person now here's a little forewarning if you use a little witchy if you subscribe to that witchcraft stuff and you think you're going to show up in person because you be going to church every sunday and they just let you sit there that ain't how we roll at tpr so you know judge yourself accordingly okay but for those who really want to be set free for those who really want information and knowledge you know really seek god as to whether or not you should be there because i'm letting y'all know now breaking news exposing witchcraft is going to be that stop and we're going to get into any and everything you can think of pertaining to witchcraft now as i segue um because i got a, a little bit of time not a lot of time i want to talk to you about objects in your home some of you have purchased objects in your home that have been a point of contact between you and the demonic realm, between you and these witches having the ability to have access to you. I really want you, as we are coming out of spring and going into summer, do a, a mid-spring beginning of summer cleaning in your home. Things that look innocent. Even when I go out to some of my favorite stores down like Home Goods and Marshalls, I don't care what y'all think, I like them stores. Um, I'm very mindful of what I am purchasing. If you are a Christian and you have a Buddha statue in your home, that is a no-no. I don't even know why I should say it. If you have African sculptures in your house, if you have certain uh, things that have snakes on it, I want you to really seek the Father, whether it be earrings or necklaces, and ask God about what you have purchased. Now, why am I going here? Well, as always, I'm going to give you a testimony. So, I was down the TikTok shop. Listen, I know. TikTok, TikTok, right? TikTok has been exposing so many things. And I purchased two ankle bracelets for my ankles from the TikTok shop, okay? They was on sale. They was like $2.00. And I like ankle bracelets in the summer. When I got them, um, I put them on. And within two days, both of my ankles swelled. And I'm like, Lord, what is going on? Why are my ankles swelling so plain when my skin is getting so tight? Like, that wasn't happening before. Like, what's going on? And I'm like, it can't be these um, these anklets. Like, for real. I, they, I got them off the TikTok shop. It's not the anklets. Well, how many of you know that as soon as I took the anklets off, and they weren't even on tight, honey. But as soon as I took the anklets off, the swelling left. So, you got to understand what jewelry is and the purpose of jewelry when it comes to witchcraft. Jewelry is a binding agent, right? So, it's reminiscent of, like in slavery times, the shackles and the chains that were put on the ankles and the wrist and the neck. So, necklaces, um, anklets things of that nature um, can be used um, in witchcraft to bind a person. I had um, someone who was in a relationship and the girlfriend was from Dubai. They were overseas, right? And you know, they got holding up a different type of spirits over there. And the relationship was very toxic. 
and the girlfriend had given this individual a bracelet that she claimed was her great her grandmother's or something like that as like um something to attest to their relationship right and as toxic as the relationship was this person could not get away from the girl like they wanted to break up they wanted to leave them but something kept drawing them back so don't cut the bracelet it was like no belong to the grandma i said she's lying to you it, it, it's not even a grandmother thing it has witchcraft on it she did witchcraft too to bind you to her how many of you know that as soon as they finally cut the bracelet they were real they were finally able to break free from the spell of the young lady because it was an enchantment so you got to be very careful about the things you have in your home and the things that you are wearing because these things are made overseas and now with the age of social media we're seeing how they're actually making it y'all ever seen them indian food street vendor videos y'all ain't got to worry about me okay beforehand i didn't know that's how they was doing it but now that i see how they make these food in these factories and things of that nature they make their street food and whatever i don't want no parts because now you get a first look at what's really being done behind the scenes so things can look innocent i understand it but not everyone has good intentions this is what if y'all don't walk away from nothing from this exposing witchcraft um series is that not everyone has your heart not everyone has good intentions and although yes we have the blood of jesus recovered by the blood of jesus this and the third everybody everybody's claiming christ isn't really following christ everybody if you're very rally you look at your life you got open doors you have areas of sin that will give open access to you so there's just a carefulness we don't operate in fear i'm not fear mongering we don't operate in fear but what we do we discern properly and we make sure that we are doing our due diligence right because i'm sure y'all don't want no more warfare than you already have so i'm going to encourage you ending out may and before june is completely over to do a purge a cleaning within your home even clothes did y'all know that clothes can house spirits and mantles mm -hmm. david didn't want saul's armor why sir um i don't know what you got going on because you be tormented by spirits and i don't know what comes with that i know what comes with what god gave me that's why y'all shouldn't be so quick come on now to want someone else's mantle, to want someone else's position. You don't know the shoes they got walking. You don't know the torment that they go through. You don't know all that comes attached. So, I'm gonna give you an example. Y'all know I like to give example, and all this is in the word, but again, I'm giving you snippets. When it comes to clothing, imagine your grandfather was an alcoholic and dealt with addiction. Hear me. And he passes. And all of a sudden, they want you to have all your grandfather's clothes. And the next thing you know, you're wearing the clothes and you have a desire that either you have been able to discipline up until this point or that you have never experienced before because you are now allowing the, um, the mantle, the, the spirit, the, um, the, 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 torment or the seducing spirit that was attached to your uncle attached to the bloodline to now attach to you garments are important if y'all don't think i'm in the scripture go read leviticus there's certain garments that we're supposed to be wearing certain garments that we're not supposed to be mixing and matching because garments matter especially when it pertains to your spiritual health okay another teaching for another day these are just snippets because Prayerfully, this will trigger and remind you of something that the Holy Spirit has already been working on you about. Like, yeah, I gotta go. I gotta throw that out. Yeah, I need. I need to go through my closet. Yeah, I got a cane from you know my my great great grandma. I need to go ahead and get rid of that because she she ain't have a good life, and that cane is just indicative of the infirmity that was plaguing her. And I don't want that kind of. I don't want those spirits, anything attached to that, to be welcomed into my home. How many of you know as soon as it walks through your portal, your door, uh-oh, you now welcome it into your home and everything that it comes with. So when we talk about, when Jesus talks about um, when the spirit is gone and it leaves and it goes walking in dry desolate places and it comes back. And if you let it back in the house and it sees that it's been swept clean, it brings buddies, right? It holds the door open. So you don't want anything holding the door open for more, okay? We're trying to get rid of all of that. Now, I also want to say this. 
I don't want you to delve into trying to live this life of perfection and thinking you're never going to send this, that, and the third. Because realistically, the only one that was perfect that walked this earth was Christ. Okay? Now, <clears throat> when the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you sin in your life, you deal with it. Right? Your goal is to strive towards perfection. Okay? Your goal is to be uh, Christ-like. Your goal is to be a reflection of the Father. That's the goal. All right? But we don't operate... And condemnation. The Holy Spirit will convict, but he won't condemn you. Because guess what? This is where the blood of Jesus comes in. This is where the blood covenant of Jesus Christ comes in. Because all have sinned and done what? Fall short of the glory. So everyone will have a moment somewhere. But it doesn't make you any less a child of God. It doesn't make you any less loved by the Father. But when you recognize your mess up, fix it. Because that mess up opens doors. And it holds it open. And we over here trying to close doors. So go through all your stuff. From this point forward, honestly, I, I refuse to now even accept shoes that other folks have walked in. I went through all my clothing. And I, to the best of my ability that I could remember while I was in there, I got rid of stuff um, from individuals that I knew were hoarders. And they were giving stuff away. And I took it. Um, individuals that I knew that they gave me the gift. But if you don't, if you don't like me now, you ain't like me then. So it has to go got rid of that because all of that is a point of contact all of that comes with <clears throat> comes with stuff and what kind of stuff you ask the kind of stuff that they come with look at them and see what kind of stuff they come with and, and then you see what you're invited into your space wondering why you got something sitting on the edge of your bed at night because they worship their ancestors and you accepted a gift from them so the spirit that is on them comes with it well, be that means I can't take. Well, oh well. <laughs> oh well. If your discernment is not to the point where you can receive something from somebody and not be able to discern this or that, then guess what? Take a season off. There's a season for everything. There's a time and a season for everything. There's a time where you're going to receive gifts. There's going to be a time where you're going to be like, nah, I'm good. And with the climate of everything nowadays that's going on, a lot of it within the body, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you now, it's going to be a not nah, I'm good type situation. Because there are a lot of folks in the kingdom of darkness trying to trip up the kingdom of God through gifts. Some gifts you can't, in all your praying and stuff, you can't sanctify, you can't clean up. Uh-oh. Trying to help y'all out. I do believe I posted it on the group, in the Facebook group, and I told all y'all to watch the video of the guy who gave his testimony of how um, he was at the graveyard and there was a bag of money at the graveyard. And he was told either you take this money and you use it for you or, it, or you take this money and you give it away to other folks and um, here's the caveat. If you use it for you, someone in your family has to die. If you give it away to somebody else, then they'll have to deal with the deaf spirit. So what does this man do? He takes the money. And this is real stuff. If y'all keep thinking that this stuff is made up, I don't know what world y'all live in. He takes the money and he becomes known within his neighborhood as a big giver. He's giving away thousands and hundreds of dollars to people. Oh, he's out there with the camera. Come on, y'all. Y'all see all those folks with the camera? That should tell you something. Giving away all this stuff, this money to the homeless folks, right? And then he ends up getting tormented. He says that he began to be visited by the spirits of the people. We know that those were familiar spirits. Those were tormenting spirits. But all in all, the ones who died because they had received the money. Not all money is good money. Not every gift is a good gift. So between now, the end of May, and all of June, before you go into July, make sure you do a purging and a cleaning and even things that you feel like you're attached to, like rings, you shouldn't be attached to nothing in this world. You can't take it with you when you die. I'm going to be 100 with you. Even if, if, if it came down the bloodline, I get it. It holds value. But if it's going to hold value and hold the door open for some spirits, guess what? It's not worth it. So I really want you to seek the Father about what in your home you got to get rid of. If you got to start fresh, I want you to understand anything that the God's going to say to give away, don't worry. It's He's going to replace it with something better, even relationships. 
So, I just wanted to give y'all a snippet. Dallas, Texas, we will be exposing witchcraft with panels, strategy um, sessions, and more. July the 20th, Dallas, Texas, more information will be released. If you feel like this is something you want to be a part of, meet us there because this is a part of our outreach. This is a part of how we're going to evangelize within the Dallas area. Love you. Bye.